On today's show, we're going to be talking about config. What impact do the recent announcements at config have on your design system? Do the new AI features mean that we're all out of a job? Uh, is it okay to call Dylan daddy? Uh, I'm Luke Murphy, and I'm joined by my co-host, Michelle Chin. We're both design advocates at Zero Height, the design system management platform, and this is Design Systems WTF. Uh, it's not okay to call Dylan daddy. Uh, so weird. <laughs> But, you know, I just thought I'd clarify that from the beginning. So, uh, Config, for those who don't know, if you're living under a rock, happened last week um, out in San Francisco. This is Figma's annual conference where they announce a whole bunch of features um, and do deep dives into them. Uh, we were lucky enough to be there, which is really cool. Um, it was it it was a it was a big event, Michelle. <laughs> It was it was a lot. There's a lot of people. Let's just say there was maybe too many people. I think was the. <laughs> uh, I think there were ten thousand people there in total. Which for me, that's not a conference. That's just a, I don't know, cult gathering, um, pseudo it's like, festival. Yeah, I mean, I think anywhere you walked within like a ten block radius, you saw someone who was also attending convert or config. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was definitely definitely a big event um and uh surprise surprise everyone now has COVID except for us so that's good um but <laughs> but so they announced a whole load of things from uh figma slides or flides as it should be called um they announced a whole slew of ai related features including like uh ai generated designs copy um search there's some really cool stuff in there uh they properly unveiled code connect uh which has been in beta for the last few months and i think we, we talked about it briefly before but i think it was really great to get a, a a bigger deep dive into it especially for design systems folks uh they unveiled the new ui who cares um and the, and and yeah as well as a whole bunch of other stuff um so i suppose well i suppose actually let's let's start off with the spiciest um what was missing um i i feel like i question whether we need groups or not i feel like there's such a like auto like groups is like a like an old school thing when we didn't have auto layout in any of the design apps so i was like maybe they'll take it away oh interesting. so i feel like that was but you need missing to, you need but... them to make auto layout actually work uh, <laughs> but you know you can auto layout your auto layout and Just auto layout auto, that. auto layout but all the way down i don't know i mean like i i feel like because what happens is that some people lean on groups too much and they don't use auto layout and so then that becomes problematic when you need them to leverage auto layout yeah. maybe it's like you toggle on groups when people can use auto layout properly yeah as like yeah. a reward <laughs> you that. can't have grouping unless you master <laughs> auto layout um, Unless you're using auto layer correctly, uh, just toggle off. Yeah, disable groups. It sounds great. But yeah, David mentions that like uh, frames with absolute position positioning does the same thing. So it's just like, eh, like <laughs> we really need groups. But yeah, did you feel like anything should have been uh, missing or that wasn't announced at the conference? I don't know. There were. Um, I heard smatterings around site buildery type things um it's one of those areas that I, I to be honest i don't know whether i actually want figma to do it um but i have heard of them doing something like webflow or framery type thing where they can just pump out a site um that i know well i mean nothing got announced but i i have heard like i don't know rumors around it happening internally um i do feel I don't know. I'm still skeptical of anything that they think can pump design straight to code. Um, I just don't think we're we haven't had anything good at, in that space ever. And there's been a lot of people yeah. who have tried. So yeah, a lot of a lot of people. Yeah. Um, also, you know, finally renaming variables to tokens. Uh, just as a wild shout there. Uh, and I don't know, maybe, yeah, as I think Jules pointed out in the chat here, maybe actually improving them a bit more as well. <laughs> uh, we got typography support a few few months ago, but I'd love to see them keep keep pumping that out. I mean, I'm assuming that that's probably going to happen in smaller releases anyway. Was there anything else for you? Um, I, I kind of wish that like 
Figma and Fig Jam would just become like one thing. Um, because I want to put sticky notes in my Figma files. I don't always want to have to like make a sticky note component oh, or I use it. I just want sticky notes. Like, <laughs> is that asking for too much? So I don't know, like just mash them up. Well, what we can do is once we're finished recording this, we can just chunk these little bits of video up and uh, just start really heavily targeting Figma on TikTok um, because our voices matter. Um, oh, apparently you can paste the the sticky notes from Fig Jam into Figma files. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I Am wouldn't I... have mind if they killed more features, I think is like the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's... Uh... It was really interesting as well. There was a whole session where Dylan sat down with Lenny from Lenny's podcast to chat about stuff. And Dylan just kept on going on about um, the beauty of simpl like simplifying things. Um, and I think they've got a long way to go there. I think UI3 was a pretty good like um, move towards simplification, but it's still hella complicated. And it's only going to get more complicated. And I think they probably need to pull out a bunch of stuff like groups. Um, but yeah, anyway, we should probably start talking about the things that they actually did announce. Um, Let's do that. So so I think the big one that's on everybody's lips is AI, because it's what every company seems to be doing. Um, and I mean, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an AI fan, <laughs> but with, with caveats um, that, you know, the ethics of AI are still real bad. So... <laughs> Um, and so I thought it was interesting, like the, obviously the big one that got a lot of attention was the make, uh, make design feature, which is basically like auto generated, uh, layouts, um, which I don't know. It's interesting. They've already come out in the last day and said that they're turning it off for the moment to work out a bunch of stuff after a lot of criticism. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about it? I, you know, it's like I find like a, a nice novelty, but then I think what kind of caught me, what kind of like sent up a red flag for me was that, um, you know, people might rely on this too heavily and also they need data to train the models. And so they were going to capture other people's Figma designs. Um, it was going to, that feature was going to be turned off um, for enterprise accounts by default, but if you didn't have an enterprise account, which I think is a lot of people, um, you have to go and manually turn that off. So your designs, your intellectual property, like kind of get funneled into this uh, data, like group of, of, yeah, to feed their, their model um, to then generate more UI. And there are some really great designers out there, right? So like, I feel like that we could just kind of AI ourselves out of a, a job almost, right? So, um, <laughs> well, I don't know. I also feel like it's just kind of AI us into a really bland mediocrity where everything, everything is a like gray pastiche of everything else. Okay. Um, the worst two words, but devil's advocate. Um, the, <laughs> um, a lot of people share their designs anyway, and I don't think it's that uncommon for the entire industry to just copy each other. It, this is just speeding up that process. Uh, so, like, that, that's one thing. I yeah. True, but, I mean, I feel like then, you know, it's kind of like the whole, like, dispute with AI, just, like, generating images and people's ip and their artwork right like it's very similar i think also like you know it's just figma is then making money off of the stuff that you created yeah yeah I, and i think that is that is the it's it's where it does get quite sketchy um it's interesting actually because when i was diving into the the whole thread around why they've turned it off for the moment is because at the moment it's not trained off of files it's trained off well it's trained off of public llms um combined with and like heavily weighted towards a whole bunch of um basically files they created i wouldn't be surprised if it was like the ui kits that they basically launched as well the ios uh machine learning um material design words and the simple design system that they created for for figma um and and i mean that kind of makes sense the fact that you know you ask it to build your weather app and it builds you apple weather um it's it's pretty indicative of like 
um, you know, where those designs came from. But yeah, it is it is something that uh, I think Myra pointed out. If you do want to opt out, you do have until August fifteenth to um, to opt out. Um, I I think this is this is a problem. This is like a moral quandary for me. Is that as a concept and in theory, this could be good. Like this could be good as a way to shortcut your way to like focusing on craft in terms of, you know, it builds you a boilerplate and you can build on top of that. Right. And especially if that boilerplate is based off of like best practice of what a lot of other people are working. Yeah. Like it could be, it could be a really useful thing. However, the reality of this shit show of a world capitalist, like what is it, late stage capitalist dumpster fire of a society that we live in, is that designers might see it that way, but I don't necessarily think that the rest of the business is going to see it that way, and they're just going to see it as a way to easily create interfaces that kind of look good, and so either like only hire unskilled designers or like lower skilled designers or just been designed off um and it, it does i don't know it does it definitely does worry me do you see any upsides <laughs> i mean i don't know i feel like i i want to be optimistic because i like technology but i'm also i i think i'm also very uh I'm not naive anymore, right? Like I see like the dangers that other tech yeah. has done to humans and I don't think it's good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think I, I did like play around with another AI generate like UI generation tool. And I like asked it to create a, a website. So about like, I guess like announcing that climate change is uh, false um, to deny climate change and then it did it and it did a really good job in terms of like a UI like that you know everyday people would be like oh this is a very professional looking site like I asked it to like mimic a government agency and it did and it provided quotes so like if I was a malicious person and didn't know how to design like I could do that and it was like it was easy so I think even like a site builder like an actual site builder type thing could be very very scary, right? Like you don't even have to know. You can just make it. Um, okay, I didn't yeah. I try I take other... back all of my potential positives. Um, that's terrifying. Yeah. I didn't uh, try it... any other like weird, I don't know, topics It'll be... because I just didn't want to go there. <laughs> yes, scamming 101. I was going to say, it'll be interesting to because we have, um, we have Pablo Stanley as a guest uh, at the end of July, I believe. Um, yep. Been, been rescheduled and pablo did build some moose show which i'm guessing might be what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. um yeah which was basically it's it's it was a plugin for figma that it is a plugin for figma that you can use to like generate designs using ai so it'd be interesting to get his take on it as well so i'm looking forward to that um on the other ai um the other ai announcements so they had uh ai generated writing uh which they very much stressed was like to help with placeholders um which again i think using for placeholders great using for final copy bad um ai search which was basically being able to like search within your um like using natural language to search using images to search using drawings to search for like yeah. components or screens I thought that was pretty cool. And then was there any, oh, the other like small, which I don't think was bundled in the AI announcement, but the auto auto layout, which is 100% driven by um, an L, it must be driven by an LLM, which suggests a way that your auto layout should be grouped uh, based off of like what it knows about what you're trying to do. Um, I feel like all of those kind of things, that's, what we should be oh auto generating layer names the one that got the biggest oh, applause. Yeah. <laughs> um that's the kind of stuff we should be using ai for it's the utility stuff that, that yeah. none of us want to do that is time consuming and crap 
Yeah, like Rachel mentioned, it's just kind of like great to fill in those gaps within our process, like a lot of those friction points, um, which, you know, they mentioned, I think, I think that's kind of, it's just like the utility, utility aspect is, is really great. Like, I like that. I don't, I was like wowed by the little, like, let's draw this little icon and then have it search for it. I was like pretty wowed by that, but I, I don't know if I would, how often I would use that. I don't know. I'd be curious. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought all that was cool. Like, do you feel like you'd use the drawing search? No, um, I thought that was a really nice uh, like sales tool, marketing tool. But um, I mean, who's gonna sit there and <laughs> I don't know. I don't use my drawing tablet when I'm searching for things in Figma, and that's the only way. Like, it feels like it would take a lot longer to draw an icon than it would to try and explain it in natural language. But I'm a words person as well. I'm I'm one of those rare designers that actually prefers words. Uh, <laughs> I feel as like you can tell from the amount I talk. But we can we can make it like a little game, like a little Pictionary game where you draw and see if the AI can find it and people can get points for how how accurate it is based on Sounds their drawing. Useful. Um <laughs> And yeah, team this, building. Is, this is also, uh, as G pointed out in the chat, also assuming that we don't know where our icons are. In saying that, I have definitely dealt with systems that have thousands of icons. And I'm just going to say, not all designers are good at naming things. Um, it's a, it's, I think that is a universal truth. Yeah, I think um, Nordstrom's design system, they wrote an article in Medium, and we can post this in the show notes, but they they talked about how they organize their icons. They had a content designer do user research on that just to create good labels. So that was really cool, but not everyone does that. I think people should. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I worked at a company where we had like 50,000 icons at our disposal, and that was a nightmare. I, it was oh. just kind of like... People are like, let's load this into the library. I'm like, no, no, because that's just going to make the library really slow. Um, yeah, it's just icons can be a nightmare. Yeah, That's another topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I feel like we're running out of time. We never have enough time for these things. But I do want to talk about Code Connect quickly, because I do think that it's probably the thing that actually has. Oh, by the way, the I think that. The, one of the most, I want to see what they do with it. And I think it is one of the most exciting areas of the AI. If we can, if we can put the ethics aside for like a second, which is very hard. Um, but uh, they were saying that they're working on the make designs, but powered via your design system. I think that there's, there's something in that that is jointly very exciting and utterly terrifying. Um, that I, I think, I don't know. I feel like this might be a turning point. Uh, if they can crack that, and they clearly haven't yet, because otherwise they wouldn't have announced it at Config. But um, if they can crack that, that's going to be a that's that's going to be a, a an interesting space to watch. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they like figure that out. Um, anyway, Code Connect, because uh, it was yeah. one of the only things that they announced that was very design systems focused, uh, and it was announcing that it's out of beta, but they clearly added a bit of functionality in there as well. Um, and I don't know if anybody here has had a chance to play with Code Connect. The idea being that you can uh, connect up your uh, Figma components um, to the code side of things um, by it's it's to be honest, it's basically by writing a story. Um, let's just say that I'm going to put the hot take out there that this is Figma attempting to kill Storybook, um, which. I'm not sure I like. Why don't you like it? I'm curious. I mean, I have my own thoughts, but yeah. Okay. So I think, so there's, there's a few things. It was mostly, it's, it was nothing in the way that they like released the features or anything like that, but it was very much in the language that they were using when they talk about describing it. And I definitely recommend people go and check out the deep dive on Code Connect to see the way that they were talking about it. Because they talk about this as documentation. And... They talk about this as uh, they they talk about one bringing the code in as documentation, which I'm like, 
I don't think you know what documentation is. Um, but then they also, they pepper that with annotations as well to make sure that you can like add contextual information in there. And then they did a really small update to like the actual documentation that you can put in Figma, the like little side panel where you can include rich text in there. So you can link off to other things. You can like have some type hierarchy in there and stuff, which is like all of these things are suggesting that they're basically trying to be this one-stop shop for design systems. The reason that worries me is because Figma is a design tool. And Figma is designed first. And Figma's main priority is designers. Now, not saying that can't change, but it also means that that's where they're coming from and that's where their priority has been, as opposed to what design systems are supposed to be, which is like uh, getting all the teams onto the same page like and getting them to be like speaking the same language but i don't know respecting the processes that they already have and the ways that they already work this is kind of like trying to force everybody into the yeah. design tool which to me is almost like prioritizing the design above everything else as well as a concept uh it also worries me because their way of viewing documentation is documentation light and it's like everything about it is like yeah, documentation is like this thing that we kind of like have to care about, but it's actually not that important. So if you can get away with writing as little documentation as possible, there are parts of me that kind of half agree with this, but it really falls down when you think about that actually the most important thing in your design system should be patterns. Yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, if AI is going to do all your work, you don't need to read the documentation. So you don't need documentation. Um, you can get away with documentation light. But I think I think for me, like the the yeah, it's like I it feel like a design tool that's trying to like, I don't know, suck in dev developers, but not really because I don't know. It's just like so the idea is like it, you know, you have a like a button component and you click it and it says, hey, you should pull the button component from this library and it's a code. But like Maybe if you're like a new designer, you need that. But if you're like after like the second screen you design, you know there's a button component. Like it just feels like it adds like a lot of noise. So like if there isn't a component, it's almost like, you know, if something's a new component, that's what needs to be flagged and said like, hey, this needs to be made. Um, and instead of like front loading a lot of just dev content for things that they probably already know. Cool. We're actually getting close to time now. So if anybody has any questions, chuck them through. I've I've been seeing, I, I feel like I, I actually need to like collect all of Mara's comments here and just put them into a post about. Um, yeah, I feel like the Mara is very AI. well researched and yes. it's, it's like there aren't questions, but there's really good discussion, which is really awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree. Like it's, you know, UX isn't only a maker of visual interfaces. And I think a lot of us today understand that, but like, I feel like after going to config, the next generation of designers does not understand that. No. And it's a little scary, I think. Like, so in the key, like the closing keynote where Dylan interviewed the CEO of Teenage Engineering and, and the guy mm -hmm. from Teenage Engineering, like really like, it's kind of like one of those like geniuses that knows what they want and will just make it and won't, talk to other people but I think he does his own user research but I guess when Dylan had asked about like did he do user research or does he do and he said no and then people cheered and I was like I don't know my heart sank I was like why are people why are designers cheering for not doing user research I was like I, I don't know I had like a little like freak out moment inside um, because that's just you just never I never imagined being a place where designers cheered for not doing user research because that's just that's just i don't know it it just struck a chord with me <laughs> yeah i it was uh, I, I died a little bit inside that as well i do also i was trying to articulate why i felt i do feel like that uh this is another this is another episode uh, <laughs> to do around the importance of research because i do also feel that there is we've gotten to we've kind of like overcorrected on the research stuff in a lot of companies and a lot of startups especially where it's like um we kind of rely too heavily on the data 
and I do feel like there is a place for intuition, but it's a balance, and it's a balance between those two things. And to say no, no research, uh, because I'm the user, and what I want is the most important thing. I mean, you have to have pretty good conviction conviction in your views, and that they like marry with what the market wants to be able to do that and be successful. I mean, teenage engineering for lack of a better word, make toys. So it's like, it's not, it's not like they're trying to solve the world's problems. Right. Um, but um, I do think that like, it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting area that I feel like is something that um, a lot of people, I don't know. I feel like there's, there's bad on both sides of those coins of people who are too data, data um, driven, I wouldn't say data. I think data informed is the right way to say it. Ray said in the chat, but I think that um, at the same time, anybody who's basically thinking that the next Steve Jobs can probably go and jump in the ocean. Um, yeah, and and to like um, Sandra's point, like the CEO of Teenage Engineering is is an artist, not a designer. Like not solving problems, just making things. And if anyone's tried a pocket operator. <laughs> the UX is, is pretty insufferable. I don't know. I have a couple and I like was like, I, I don't I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, but and the OP I, the OP rough. one still has a place in like the design annals as one of the most beautifully designed toys. Oh, um, that's great. Yeah. That you need to spend fifteen hundred pounds on. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um that is unfortunately all the time we've got. And I I feel like we actually need a lot more time um but uh that is all the time we've got unfortunately the chat has been popping off and i've been really enjoying it so i'm really hoping that you'll come and join zeros as well afterwards um and we can keep the chat flowing especially when we talk about um the the ai world um uh i don't have my normal podcast outro here because i forgot to write it up beforehand so i'm just gonna have to wing it and hope that paul edits this out afterwards uh, um, thanks that was great uh, as usual we'll be back in two weeks time uh, if you want to get in touch with us you can do on uh, x.com uh, at zero height uh, or on Instagram at zero height HQ uh, or on TikTok we're on TikTok as well we don't really hang out there much it's just mostly clips from these episodes um, more importantly we have a slack channel as well that you can come and join slack community that you can come join which is at zerohight.com slash slack or you can use old-fashioned email and get in touch with us at community at zerohight.com uh the next episodes i've got no idea but it's going to be really exciting do you know what it is michelle it's featuring dave our dev advocate so hey. uh, we'll be talking about web components i won't be there but um i'm sure it will I be an interesting conversation as well I get to nerd out about web components and why they are the only way you should build design systems in two weeks. So that's going to be very exciting. Only way. Um, until then, see you next time.